After watching this video, you'll know which items to give your Pokemon and what abilities are common to encounter in competitive battles. There are dozens of items that you can give your Pokemon as a held item to either increase the strength of their attacks or decrease the damage done from opposing Pokemon or other useful benefits that we'll get to in a bit. Three items that are very common on competitive Pokemon teams are the choice items. These items increase a particular stat by 50% but will in return force you to use a single move over and over again until you either switch out or faint. Choice Band increases a user's physical attack, Choice Specs will increase a user's special attack, and Choice Scarf increases a Pokemon's speed stat. The next item that is very common to see is Life Orb. This item increases the damage from all attacks, physical and special. You're not limited to choose only a single move, as with the choice items, but the drawback is instead that you lose HP every time you attack, hence the name Life Orb. Leftovers will heal 1 16th of your total HP at the end of each turn, and Light Clay increases the number of turns that your Light Screen and Reflect is active. There are also a range of berries you can give your Pokemon as a held item, such as Lumberry, which will automatically heal a status condition such as Burn or sleep. Citrus Berry will heal one third of your total HP when your HP goes down to yellow, and there are even berries that will allow you to take half the damage from a super effective attack. There are 10 abilities that I think are really useful to know about when battling. The first of which is the Levitate ability. A Pokemon with this ability is, well, levitating and hovering above the ground, and thus becomes immune to ground type attacks. Number two is Rough Skin. If you attack a Pokemon with this ability, your Pokemon will take damage if the move makes contact. There is a whole category of contact moves, which includes moves such as Fire Punch, Draining Kiss, and Crunch. Although there are some special moves that make contact, most moves that do make contact are physical attacks. Number three is Magic Bounce. This ability will bounce back any status moves back onto the opponent. The moves Thunder Wave, Taunt, Stealth Rock, and Will-O-Wisp will not work on a Pokemon that has the Magic Bounce ability, and will only make your Pokemon weaker. Number 4 is Mold Breaker. If your Pokemon has this ability, it will ignore the effect of your opponent's Pokemon's ability. For example, if you have a Mold Breaker Pinsir, and your opponent has a Levitate Rodom Heat, you can use Earthquake just fine. This effect also applies to the ability Magic Bounce, which we just went over, and your Pinsir can use Stealth Rock on a Magic Bounce Espeon just fine. Number five is Sturdy. This ability allows a Pokemon to survive any single hit attack with at least one HP. There is also a held item called Focus Sash that will give the holder the exact same benefit. At number six, we got Unaware. This ability allows a Pokemon such as Quagsire to ignore any stat increases by the opponent's Pokemon. This means that if your opponent has set up a bunch of Dragon Dance and you decide to send in your unaware Quagsire, it will be unaware of those stat increases and not affected by any of it. Next up we have Regenerator. Pokemon with this ability will heal one third of their total HP every time they switch out of battle. Another ability related to switching in is Intimidate. Pokemon that have this ability will decrease their opponent's physical attack when sent out in battle. At number 9 we have Pure Power and Huge Power, which are two abilities with the same effect but with two different names. These abilities doubles the Pokemon's attack stat, essentially making it really strong. Last but not least, we got a category of abilities actually, and these are the weather setting abilities. Drizzle makes it rain and will give a 50% boost to the power of water type attacks and half the damage of fire type attacks. Drought makes harsh sunlight, which gives fire type attacks a 50% boost and will half the damage done by water type attacks. Snow warning makes it snow and will give blizzard a 100% accuracy. This weather also damages all Pokemon that are not ice types. 
and Sandstream summons a Sandstorm, which will boost the special defense of rock types by 50%. This weather also damages all Pokemon that are not rock, ground, or steel types. In the last segment of this video, I briefly want to go over type effectiveness. Knowing the entire type chart, even all the not very effective hits, can greatly increase your skills in battle. The way you read a chart such as this one is that you first consider on the vertical axis what type the attack is, and then along the horizontal axis what type the Pokemon is. An example can be Garchomp, which is a dragon type and thus weak to ice type moves, but it's also a ground type which also makes it weak to ice. This makes Garchomp four times weak to ice. If you have a water type Pokemon on your team, you can then switch out Garchomp if you anticipate an ice type attack and then take a not very effective hit instead. As players, we often remember the super effective hits, but when playing competitively, it is really useful to have the knowledge of what moves will be not very effective so that you can switch out a vulnerable Pokemon into one that can take a given hit. If you found this video interesting, you can click on screen to watch another one. Thank you for watching.